Hello, everyone. You're watching Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird, and this is Manhattan Hinge. It's coming right up on the calendar, and we're going to tell you how to see it and the best place to see it, and also why you see it with someone who is an expert on this. And that would be Jackie Faraday. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Deborah. Uh, it's so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. I'm happy to be here. So Jackie is a senior research scientist at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. And Jackie, you're trained as an astronomer, right? Yeah, I have a PhD in physics and my specialty is astronomy. So I do astrophysics. I run a research group actually out of the Museum of Natural History where I have grad students, postdocs, undergrads, high school students will come work with me. All of that is within this massive tourist attraction in New York City. And then I use the Hayden Planetarium a lot, which that video you just showed is a representation from our planetarium software at the museum. And we're going to show that video again in a minute. But tell us first, what is Manhattan Hinge? Yeah, Manhattan Hinge is a name for the days of the year where the sun sets perfectly aligned with the grid of Manhattan. So perfectly aligned with the concrete jungle, the buildings, the, the moment that the sun is going to get right at the base of the horizon, it is going to kiss the middle of the street. Sometimes I call it a grid kiss. And it will be perfectly framed between iconic buildings of New York City, and then it will drop down below your horizon. So. It's an alignment of the sun's position on the sky with the grid of the greatest city in the world, Manhattan. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm in Austin, Texas, so I got to argue with you a little bit about that. One. You know, <laughs> we all we all love our own city. Um, okay. So, but what but what it also is is a big party, right? I mean, a lot of people turn out for it. Yeah, it is. It's a celebration, I think, of our place in the solar system, that people are all looking up or really across, because you don't have to look that far up. You're just going to look straight across the street. And it's a time to remember that we're on a spinning rock that's moving around the sun. Uh, and so people get excited about astronomical phenomenon. It has a little bit of the energy that you get when you watch an eclipse. If you maybe watch the one April of last year, or even the one August a couple of years ago that passed across the United States, lots of people had eclipse energy once a year. Well, not just once a year, a couple times a year. We give four dates for official Manhattan Hinge. You get that same kind of energy of people that want to watch what the sun is doing. People on the street, they get excited that they know what's going on. People that don't know what's going on get pulled into conversations. <laughs> it's a lot. And New Yorkers don't usually talk to each other, but on the days of Manhattan Henge, there's a lot of communication between strangers on the streets. And so what are the dates in 2025? So we use, so I'm actually the official calculator of Manhattan Henge. Every year I get asked by the press, like, what are the dates? When, when is it going to happen? And the official dates for 2025 are May 28th, which is next week. Uh, that's the point where the half point, the midpoint of the sun, or what we call half sun, kisses the grid before it goes down. And then one day later, May 29th, the full sun, meaning the bottom of the sun, kisses the grid, and then it goes down. And those are the May dates. Then on the other side of the summer solstice, you have two more dates. On July 11th, you get the full sun once again, kisses the grid, goes down, and then July 12th, the midpoint of the sun before it goes down, and then it's over. Okay, that's so great. So you've also called this a lesson in Astronomy 101. And I'm going to go back to this video for a minute while you tell us about that. Yeah. So, so this, why, why is it, why is it an, astro an astronomy lesson? 
So this video is showing you exactly where the sun is as we come down at a viewpoint with a three-dimensional model of New York City. And you can see how perfectly aligned the sun is. Now, the sun is 93 million miles away from you. So the, the grid of the city of Manhattan is like a half marathon length. It's like 13 miles. Every single one of the cross streets though has the same view of the sun. The sun is so far away, the grid of the city is basically just a point for it to, to hit. What's actually happening is the sun, uh, or sorry, the earth as it's spinning on its axis and is turning around the sun, reaches a point where our vantage point, the angle, the inclined angle of the grid of the city lines up with the exact position that the sun is in across the sky. And the reason it happens when it does is because the earth is tilted 23 and a half degrees. That's just our, it causes the seasons. And the Manhattan, Manhattan, while we'll usually say that our avenues run north south, they don't run exactly north south. They run, it's the city itself is off by about 23 ish, maybe 26 degrees from due north. And so that shifts when we would actually get to see these dates. But you'll notice I told you a date in May and a date in July, and they were uh, symmetric around the summer solstice. So what happens is every day after the May 29th Manhattan Henge, the sun crosses your buildings, just like what's happening in this video. It crosses just a little higher and then a little higher the next day and a little higher, but then it'll set over New Jersey. It won't set on your grid. And every day until the highest it'll get between the buildings, and that date is the summer solstice. And then at that point, by the way, solstice means sun stands still. So the sun holds its position on that day. And then all of a sudden, it's a little bit lower between the buildings, a little bit lower, because the Earth, as it's going around its orbit, around the sun, starts to move more into a position where we get less and less direct sunlight. The first day of summer, the longest day of the year, but every day after is shorter. The angle that the sun you will be seeing in your sky will be shallower and shallower all the way until the winter solstice, where we get the sun to then ping pong back to what it does in the summer. So astronomy 101 is that we are watching the alignment of the sun with the city of New York, a consequence of the tilt of the earth as it's orbiting the sun. That is so cool. So where is the very best place on May 28th and 29th to see Manhattan Hinge? So I always tell people, it depends on what you're looking for. If you want the experience of crazy, chaotic energy, tons of people, there is a Mecca. Like you this. Got, you got a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and it is... 42nd Street, which is what this is a picture of. You can see Madame, Madame Tussaud's yellow sign in there. Uh, 42nd Street, we'll see thousands and thousands of people. Now, some of the people in this picture here knew what was going on. They knew that they were coming for something. A portion of the people in this picture had no idea that they were going to be present for this. The cabs on the street, don't necessarily want this to be happening, but they start participating too. So if you want that, go to 42nd Street. 42nd Street, Times Square area, though you really wanna be farther east. The farther east you are, the longer the view you have across the city. That's a good one. But any long, any cross street where you can see all the way to New Jersey is a good one. I actually really like 72nd Street. I like 145th Street too, because I live up there. But there's a bit of a hill there, so you have to get to the other side of the hill. Uh, 34th Street is another good one. This is another good zoom in shot of the sun. That's, that's the midpoint, that's the half sun picture. Do you see how the half point of the sun is there? That's what I would call half sun Manhattan Henge. Uh, but it lights, look at how it lights up the canyon. Look at how it lights up the, the city. You see this gorgeous yellow, it's beautiful. 
Uh, you can also watch it from the outer boroughs. You can go out to Queens and go to the other side of the rivers. So there's the, the west side, which has the Harlem River, or sorry, the Hudson River. And then on the east side, it's the Harlem River. Get to the other side of the Harlem River in Queens, this park called Gantry State Park. You can look straight across the East River, across Manhattan, across the west side, and then towards New Jersey, and you get this really long view of it. And that's another good way to see it. So you have choices. That is so great. And people can look for these hinges. Uh, and of course, this is named for Stonehenge. Tell me really quickly who, who named Manhattan Hinge? Yeah, so Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's the director of the Hayden Planetarium, which is also where I work, uh, Neil's the one that coined it. He noticed it, he coined it, and he coined the name as an homage to Stonehenge, which is in England. And it's that itself was a structure built to celebrate the position of the sun on the day of the summer solstice, in the morning of the summer solstice, when the sun rises. Uh, that Stonehenge, so Manhattan Henge got that name. And so people can see these hinges in their own hometowns too, right? Anybody can have a henge. The henge, what you need to look for for a henge is you can use Google Maps if you want to. I actually have an activity if you wanna see how to calculate a henge uh, I think you can go to my website. If I don't have it there, I'll definitely put it there. I have a tab called Manhattan Henge, and I have an activity for teachers where I show them how to calculate a hen how to calculate Manhattan Henge, and then how to do it for your own favorite area, mostly of the city, but you can do it anywhere. Uh, you need to be facing west, and so whatever it is, wherever you are, you need uh, an area where you have clear view towards sunset. It can't be tall buildings or tall trees or anything in your way. Uh, and it needs to have enough of a Western view that you're going to capture the sun at some point during the year. But you can calculate when that happens. Most people know this because have you ever driven on the interstate and it's like in the morning or even in the evening and you just are like, oh my goodness, an east-west interstate and you've got the sun in your face. You're like, I can't see anything. It's having its hinge moment. And then if you just wait a week, that problem's not going to happen because the sun will have moved off of that position. But henges are happening and you're noticing them without even realizing it. Jackie, thank you so much. I, and I know there's more to say about this. And maybe we can have you come back in July and talk sure. to us about this again, because I know there's more. But we got to get out of here. So uh, I have been speaking with Jackie Faraday. Jackie, this has been so interesting. Thank you. And and she's with the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Didn't you tell us, Jackie, that there's going to be an event for yes. people who might be? Anybody that's in New York City on July 11th, I'm doing a very special public program at the Museum of Natural History. We're going to have a huge block party. We're the only street closure in New York City officially for Manhattan Hens. You can lay in the middle of the street if you want to and watch it happen. We're going to have a salsa band. It's going to be super fun. For New Yorkers, come on to the Museum of Natural History. It'll be so fun. Oh, thank you so much, Jackie. It was it was great having you here, and we really appreciate it. And I think we'll see you another time. Happy to so thank it. you. Okay, and hang around a little bit after uh, after the show because we need to make sure everything gets uploaded correctly. Okay, great. I'm hanging on. Okay, thank you. So that was Jackie Faraday. She was talking with us about Manhattan Hinge. And for Earth Sky, I'm Deborah Bird. Please join us live on Monday when we'll be talking with Dan Zafra of the website CaptureTheAtlas.com. We'll be looking at the winning photos in the annual Milky Way Photographer of the Year contest. And they are stunning. We hope to see you then. One Earth, one sky, Earth Sky.